Coming from James 4 and 8. It says, Draw near to God. Yes. And he will draw near to you. Yes. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. And purify your hearts, you double minded. Amen. 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 Isaiah 57. All right. And 15. Hmm. Isaiah 57 and 15. Amen. But thus says the Lord, who sits on high and lofty, one that inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy places. With him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Amen. Amen. Uh, yeah. We'll have now prayer. we we'll have prayer now. Good evening, Lord. Good evening. 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 Good Yea, you are walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I feel no evil. You will die with me. I fall, I stab, and I come. There are five days that will come to my end. Yes, Lord. My cup is running over. Yes, Lord. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Yes. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord for the elders. And elders. And elders. And they be up for far more watching over the last night. When I was in the hell of sleep.
Matthew, you know, we looking at Matthew Davis, Rev Shorts, and Rev Fletcher. And Rev Style. I mean Rev Failure. Uh, I just want to welcome you all into the house tonight. Amen. And they say it is blessed when we brothers can get together in unity. Amen. And tonight the next scripture follows about us standing at night in the house of the Lord. Right. And tonight we are here to uh, have a revival and be restored. Amen. And we know that you all can be anywhere else besides standing or sitting up in here doing anything that you want. Amen. But we just want to thank you all for coming. And yes. know you all are part of our family already. Amen. So we just want to thank you all for coming and celebrating with us and being restored. And we hope that something is said tonight that will help each and every one of you. And again, thank you all for coming out tonight. Amen.
moved uh, and motivated every way, every to way. worship God. All right, all right. We do serve an awesome God. Yes, okay? yes, yes, yes. I mean, He is the awesome and the amazing God. Yes, yes, sir. And we've come to lift Him good, and good. bless His, good. his holy name. Now, after they've done an A and a B selection, then we want to hear from heaven and see what God All has right. to say. Amen.
they come right out of chapter number 14 where Jesus gives this cost of discipleship. Uh -huh. Telling them that if you're going to be a real disciple, you're going to have to sacrifice some things. We live in the 21st century. And in the 21st century, folk don't want to sacrifice something. In the 21st century, we don't want to do things that are hard. We say such statements as, don't work hard, work smart. We have taught our children that hard work will get you somewhere. You need to make sure that you do things the right way. And if you do it the right way, God will bless you. And children are looking back at us saying, we're in a, this highly technological society, and we've come to the conclusion that the gaming won't give us satisfaction. Uh -huh. That a new woman can't give us satisfaction. Uh -huh. A new man won't give us satisfaction. Uh -huh. We tried her. We tried him. We tried it. And we tried them. And we still come to the conclusion I can't get no satisfaction. When we look at the text, when we look at the text, I see this boy in this trilogy of truth. First of all, Jesus says that, yeah, I'm sitting with the publicans. Yeah, I'm sitting with the sinners. Yes, I'm meeting with them. So he gives them this parable. The first parable he gives them, he says there is a sheep that has nibbled his way from the sheepfold. He says, would you not go and seek after this one little wee lamb of a sheep and leave the 99 and, and go after this sheep? Jesus continued to tell the story, and when he comes to the end of the story, he says, when you go after the one and find him, the shepherd calls for all of his shepherding friends, all the other sheep herdsmen. He said, come on over here and celebrate. My sheep that was lost is now found. And they began to make merry. The Bible says that who of you would not rejoice if one sinner comes to Christ? He says the angels in heaven throw a block party and they celebrate when one sinner comes to Christ. Okay. Then he moves further to the second parable and he talks about this woman who had ten coins. This woman had ten coins and she messed around and dropped one. Big Mama would say she dropped one. She dropped one of her coins, and the Bible suggests to us today that this woman had a dark house. It suggests that she had a nasty house. It suggests that she had a dark house because the text declares that she had to turn the light switch on. She had to turn on the polar lamp in order to find this coin. I tell you today, folk all around us are living in dark houses. I mean, they got light in their house, but God is nowhere to be seen in the house. They need to turn the light of Jesus on. The second thing I see with this woman who dropped her corn, I see the fact that she had a dirty house. Let me just serve notice on you today. I may have a crowded house. I may have a cluttered house, but you can bet it's not a nasty house. It, it, it doesn't take money to clean up a house. It, it doesn't take uh, money to get things done around the house. Yeah, it's all right to have a junkie house every now and then, but it's never a good thing to have a nasty house. How do you come to the conclusion today? It's because Christians all over the world today, they have nasty houses and, and they don't have God sweeping the house. And Jesus says that you need to sweep out your house because if you don't sweep out your house and if you don't put Christ in your house, then the devil that left out your house will come back in and bring seven others in seven times home. How you know? How you know this woman had a nasty house? Because the Bible says that she had to get the broom out. 
she had to sweep up her house. And let me tell you, you ought not wait till company come in order to get the boot. You, you ought not wait till company come to be on your best behavior. You ought not wait till folks show up at the church and, and then you want to do the right thing. You, you ought not wait till Sunday morning shows up and then you want to show forth your best behavior. It ought to be Monday through Sunday. Yeah, you ought to get rid of the nasty house. And then, then Jesus tells this final parable. Uh -huh. He talks about a man who had two sons. He says, he says that this man who had two sons had an issue because one of the sons came to the father and he was the younger of the two. Uh -huh. He came to the father and said, Daddy, give me what falls unto me. Oh. Let me sir, notice on you right now, young folk, uh, inheritance take place after your parents die, right. not while they still live. Right. You ought not be waiting on somebody to breathe their last breath and right. their tongue plead to the roof of their mouth to live off their stuff. You ought to go and get your own stuff. I tell the young folk at the New Beginning Church that there ought to come a time in your life where mom and daddy ought to be through taking care of you. You ought to be taking care of them. The Bible says that the younger son came to his daddy and when he went to his daddy and said, give me the portion of good that falls unto me. Uh -huh. And I just want to drop this in your spirit tonight and let you know that if it falls unto you, you wait till it's given unto you. You don't go and rape and rob and, and take what you want. Wait till it is given unto you. In the Jewish, in the Jewish sector, there came a time when the parents would get to a point where they were not able to take care of their own finances or take care of their the own household. It was then that the inheritance was divided, but it was divided to the older son first, and the older son got a greater portion than the younger son. But here is this younger son. Come talking about, come about, daddy, give me what falls unto me. I see a problem with that. I see this younger son being pious. I, I see this younger son being rebellious. I, I see this younger son all messed up in the mind. And because he's messed up in the mind, if you don't get it right with Jesus, you're going to continue to be messed up in the mind. Younger son comes with a point of rebellion. Uh-huh. He comes to a point of arrogance. He comes to a point of selfishness. And whenever you're selfish, and when you come and demand some stuff, it's as if he has worked for this stuff. He comes and demands stuff as if you deserve this stuff. He comes as if he is supposed to have this stuff. But let me tell you, you're not a legion to stuff that is not yours. You ought to go and get your own. Yeah. This boy has a problem. So he goes off. The Bible says that he goes off. And then it didn't say a year later, but not many days later. Right. This boy finds himself broke, busted, and disgusted. <laughs> not many days later. This boy was setting up for everybody. Some of y'all know what set up for, don't you? Yeah. He was calling the shots for everybody. He was, he was telling the bartender, give him a little tequila over here. And, and, and give him a little gin over here. And give him a little shot of Hennessy over here. And, and give him a little pound roll over here. Because I'm balling, I'm shot calling. <laughs> Somebody can identify the night though. Because you've been there, you've done that, and you've tried it over and over again. It's, it, it, it is a warning to us. Never act like you bigger than who you are. Never act like you got it going on and everybody else got to look up to you. Your stuff won't make you big. Only God can make you big. But promotion comes not from the east nor the west. It comes from God, which is in heaven. That's what I call shot to you. And for the bartenders, come on over here. Take care of my buddy over here. But you do know that when the money is gone, your friends get gone. Whenever you're not able to call the shots anymore, the friends 
get out of your way. They, they move you over. Matter of fact, your friends talk about you. Yes. They say, oh, oh, Ray is busted now. Yes. You remember when he used to buy stuff for us, and you remember when he used to use his daddy inheritance for us, but now Ray can't make it on his own. If you keep on reading the text, the oldest brother said he was hanging out with Shaquita near. <laughs> the older brother said that he was hanging out with my weed near. The older brother says he was hanging out with all those women. And that's why he come back home. All right, well, the text, the text. Talk, man. The text declares <laughs> that it wasn't until he was broke. Yeah. All right. It wasn't until he didn't have anything that a famine hit the land. Right. Let me tell you, the devil wants to make sure, the devil wants to make sure that you spend it all. Right. And the devil wants to make sure that you have nothing left. We ought to be teaching our children right now how to make budgets. We ought to teach our children right now how to make money. We ought to teach our children right now how to depend on God because at the end of the day, money can't pay your way to heaven and money can't keep your health. We got to put some sense in children. We, we got to give them some sense in their head and some God in their heart. The reason why we can't get no satisfaction today is because the devil has been running rampant for a long time. I mean, I mean, you look at the news every day, and I say it very often, when Tom Abrams is signing off ABC 13, he has given us 35 minutes of bad news. Somebody got shot, somebody got killed, somebody got robbed, somebody got stuck up at gunpoint, and somebody took somebody else's life. And after 35 minutes, you know the news used to be 30 minutes long? But when we moved into the 21st century, now. They, they, now it's 35 minutes long. For 35 minutes, for 35 minutes, he rapped and he raved. I mean, I mean, a news reporter ought to be so depressed. Yes. Because they don't have any good news. Yes. And after Tom Abrams and, and after Miss Simon and after Miss Lawson has gone on for 35 minutes, Tom Abrams comes on the news and he says, be kind to one another. Yeah, yeah. And that's the only glimpse yeah. of good news we've had for the yeah. last 35 minutes. Yeah. Be kind yeah. to one another. Yeah. That's how it is in the text. A famine comes, this boy is broke, and the Bible says that he accepts a job on the lowest Jewish totem pole. Feeding swine, wow. feeding Peace. Let me tell you, I'm from the backwoods of Mississippi, and one thing I said, when I leave there, Pastor Bell, I don't want to see another hog. I don't want to be around a hog. I don't want to smell a hog. I don't even want to taste a hog. Because at 5.30 a.m. in the morning, we're outside slopping hog, and the hogs get fed before we get fed. I don't, I don't, want, I don't want to see a hog and I don't want to see a hog. I don't want to spend no time with a hog. And some children have hogs for pets. I don't want to have anything to do with a hog. A hog will eat anything. A hog will lay down in anything. Even Peter says in 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 19 through 22, Peter says that when you have fallen away out of your sin, when you've been rescued from your sin, don't be like the hog that go back and wallow in the mud and in the mouth. And then he says, and don't be like the dog that will eat up anything and then vomit it up and then lick it back up. He says that you are nothing but a dog. Uh, say right in the word. It is. This man went from riches to rags. This man went from having it his way to busting. This man went from there to giving him everything he needed to having nothing. His friends are gone. His family is gone. His buddies are gone. His ponies are gone. And now he is in the hog field feeding the hogs. All right, all right, say it. But the good news today is sooner or later you need to come to yourself. 
The Bible, the Bible says that in Luke 15, verse 11, he says that he came to himself. Uh -huh. Oh, that's good news, I tell you. He came to himself. Some young folk have chosen other things to do with their lives, and then you got senior saints trying to find other things to do with their lives. Now look, when your child start partying at the same place you party, it's time for you to bring your old self home. I think I said again. Yeah. Whenever your child start partying where you're partying, it's time to bring your old self home. I, I declare I'm 60 plus now, and I've got to the point where when the sun goes down, I'm making my way to the house because it's dangerous out here. Yeah. You can tell when a person gets old when they come to the point where they say it's too dangerous out here. These folk crazy out here. I can't drive on the streets out here because it's dangerous out here. We live in a time where you can't walk your own neighborhood. We, we live in a time where life is so tough that, that people will shoot you just for blowing your horn. And life is so tough right now. If you stare at them and the police ask them, why did you kill them? Because they looked at me the wrong way. This boy is in the home field. He's in the field, and the Bible says, with fame, he was about to eat the hog slop. But the good news is he came to himself. Yeah. Have you ever been on your way to do something and the Holy Spirit spoke to you? You better come to yourself. Have you ever been on your way to get something done and, and you know the devil doesn't chip us with ugly stuff? The devil doesn't tip us with nasty stuff. The devil, the devil doesn't tip us with stuff we don't like. I mean, the devil was trying to tip me just on Sunday. I mean, they gave me a chocolate cake and it had chocolate icing on the top. The devil was trying to tip me. Now, cake and chocolate may not be your problem. That may not be your vice. But one thing about it, the devil doesn't have any new scheme. It's the same scheme he played on Adam and Eve. He played that thing that was good for the flesh, the thing that's good for, for eating, and that thing that's for the pride of life. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, the chips this boy. This boy is in the hog fields. He's feeding the hogs, and, and all of a sudden, he begins to act like a hog. Uh -huh. Let me tell you, young folk, let me tell you, senior saints, that if you stay in, t in sin so long, you will get comfortable there. Yeah, yeah cause sin will take you further than you want to go. Yeah. Sin will make you stay longer than you want to stay. Yeah. And sin will cost you more than you can afford to pay. Yeah. Sin. Yeah. Sin can get a hold on us. Well, yeah. preacher, why you know so much about sin? Because I'm a sinner and, and I've been where you are. Matter of fact, I'm where you are right now. The Apostle Paul says it like this in Romans chapter 7. He says, he says that every time I want to do good, every time I think about doing good, every time I want to do what's right, it's sin that keeps coming up and, and showing up. And I would do good, but my members uh -huh. yeah. keep tempting me to do that which is right. You know, some, some people will tell you, I didn't get in this sin all by myself. And somebody will, somebody coerced me to come here. Somebody showed me the way to get here. But you know, sin has a way of talking to us. You know, sin can be personified. And, and sin will tell you it happened to the boy down the street, but it won't happen to you. It may happen to the woman over yonder, but it won't happen to you. And so we become like we are immoral and we think that we can get away with it. I mean, every criminal, I mean, even the criminals we have today, they wear their britches around their knees. You can't even run from the police with your britches around their knees. I would be glad if I was a cop. I would be glad to run around some of these jokers now because they can't run. They got to stop every two seconds and pull them up again. <laughs> the text the class, this boy came to himself. Uh -huh. And when he came to himself, he started talking to himself. Yeah. And some of you make fun of folk that talk to themselves. You said folk who talk to themselves are crazy. But let me tell you, if you don't talk to yourself with all this going on right here, you will go stone crazy. 
Have you ever been in the house all by yourself? Yeah. There's nobody to listen but you and God. Yeah. And you start talking to yourself. Yeah. Let me tell you, it happened to me the other day. I went downstairs to get something, and I went right there and started looking in the kitchen, and I, I looked in the in the den, and, I, and I, then I looked in the living room. I started talking to myself, and I said, Self, now why did you come down here? <laughs> Any witnesses in the house? <laughs> now, Self, you came down 16 steps of stairs, and now you're down here, you got to go back up 16 steps of stairs just to figure out what one thing you went down there. <laughs> Let me tell you, let me tell you, you better start talking to yourself. Because if God doesn't keep your mind, your mind won't get kept. Let me tell you, your, your, your stuff that was that thing that they say, you, I've been taking and now my mind is clear. And you can take all the pills you want. You can do all the exercise you want. You can do all the claiming and naming that you want. If God doesn't keep you, you can't be kept. My wife, my eyes flew wide open and I became a living soul. Come on, man. Talk, man. All right. Jesus says the boy came to himself and started talking to himself. Let me just make my first point and I'm going to cut across the field. My first point is you need to remember the Father. Uh-huh. If you in sin, you need to remember the Father. Verse number 17, the boy says that I know my Father has bread enough to spare even for the slaves. He said that my father's house, they have bread enough and to spare, and here I am out here with the hog, starving and hungry. Uh He didn't think about his brothers. He didn't think about his bedroom. He didn't think about what folk were doing at the house. He didn't think about the work he needed to put in when he get back there. He didn't think about the father. The problem with Christians today is that we think about everything but the father. Yeah. We write letters to counselors. We, oh. we write letters to the newspaper. We write letters on social media. Oh and now we tell it for all on social media. Hey. But you need to tell it to God because when you tell it to God, God is able to fix it for you yeah. in a way you can yeah. First thing this boy said when he came to himself, he said, my father has enough back home to feed the servants, and I'm out here perishing with hunger. He said, I tell you what I'm going to do. I will arise and go back. He didn't even mention home. He said, I will arise and go back home to my father. And I will tell my father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I am no more worthy to be called your son. Father, make me one of your high servants. My next point to you is, you need to rehearse your speech. You need to rehearse your speech. You, you can't just continue to go to God any kind of way because going to God any kind of way got you in the predicament you're in right now. And you know, God is not the man upstairs. God is not the big boss man. God is the God that keeps us in spite of us. He gives yeah. us mercy and he yeah. gives us grace. Yeah. Oh, if you're going to drive in Houston, you're going to need both mercy yeah. and you're going to need grace. Yeah. Yeah. The other day, the other day, man, that's another man. If I'm, if I'm going to heaven, do I need Jesus to go to heaven? He said, brother, you need Jesus to pump gas. You need Jesus to go to Walmart. You, you need Jesus to walk out your house. Yeah, you need Jesus just to breathe. You need Jesus every day, every second of the day. In verses 18 and 19, he began to rehearse his speech. My third point to you is, he removed himself from the slop. Some sin, you just got to quit. Some sin, you just got to give it up. Don't don't even go back and talk to it. Make a deal with it. Somebody get it. I'll tell you get it. Don't, don't even go back to him and say, baby, you know, we've had a good ride, but it's time to shut it down. Just quit. The only brother asked me the other day, he said, man, how do I get out of sin? I say, stop it! You gotta remove yourself from the slot that you're in. You, yes. you gotta remove yourself from the stuff going on around you. Yes. Matter of fact, you gotta remove yourself from that thing that you enjoy doing. Yes. You can tell, you can tell when the saints have not turned the world loose yet. They said, I remember the good old days. <laughs> and then they start smiling. They said, oh, and 
then if they got a friend with them that used to be their old dog back then, then they will start rehearsing what the good old days looked like, what the good old days felt like. Am I talking to anybody in this room? You have to remember the father. You have to re rehearse your speech. You have to remove yourself from the spot. You have to repent of your sins. You have to look at it, look at it and say, God, I messed up. Listen to this boy. He, he goes, after he rehearses it, after he removes himself, he goes to the daddy. Let me tell you, your father is sitting on the gallery waiting on you. I say your father is sitting on the gallery looking for you. Your father is sitting on the gallery waiting to accept you. You ought to just repent of your sin because God enjoys hearing you repent of your sin. And repentance means that you change your mind. Repentance means that you turn away from it. Repentance means you took a 180 when you were going east. You turn around and go west because you're going in the indication that I have turned away from my sin. In the house. Yeah. Is there anybody that's stuck in sin? Yeah. All you got to do is quit it. Don't reason it out. Don't think about it. You just got to do it. Yeah. You just got to turn it loose. You yeah. just got to. You just got to say, forget this. Yeah. And then if somebody trying to bribe you, let them go on because when they dig ditches, they don't need to dig for yeah. ruin. Yeah. Because the one ditch they dig, yeah. they fall yeah. into it and say, yeah. 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 we don't have to pay for a bribe. That folk tell you what they gonna do to you. Yeah. You know when you when they gonna do something they already done it anyway. Yeah. 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 Let it go. Yeah. I tell people all the time I used to have an afro, yeah. but one day it just let go. Yeah. I mean I got tired of combing it, and I had more on the floor than I had on my hand. It just let go. That's how you have to do with sin. My hair got tired of my head one day. And when my hair got tired of my head, it just turned flat loose. And now, Pastor Fletcher, I found out that bald heads are in. I was paying high hair bills all this time for nothing. I, I was trying, God was trying to get me there, but the, my hair had to let me go. I want to tell you tonight, God is trying to get you there. You just need to turn it loose. I know it feels good. I know it tastes good. I know it gives you great pride in what you do, but you got to turn it loose. Amen. Amen. I found a point today. The Bible says that he came to himself. Uh -huh. The Bible says while he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. Yeah. I'm telling you, Dad is listening for you. Yeah. Yeah. He's listening for you. Yes, he is. He's looking for you. Yes. He's adamant about it. Yes, sir. I'm telling you, I know you're saved, and I know folks on your job know you're saved, and I know you're having a bad time, and I know sometimes your supervisor want you want to give them a piece of your mind. Yeah. But just hold your hope, baby. Yeah. God will fight your yeah. battles for you. The Bible says that the father saw him while he was yet a great way off. Yes. And look at what the daddy does. In the 21st, it says that the daddy saw him while he was a great way off. Yes. His father saw him and the father had compassion yes. on him. Yes. He didn't have pity on him because you have pity on the man down the street, but you don't ever feed him. The Bible says the daddy had compassion. The father said, come on, son, I've been waiting on you. He had compassion on him. Yes, the Bible says, not only did he have compassion, he ran to him. Yes. Now, this is a picture of what God does for us. Yes, yes. God, God, this is a sign of the almighty God yes, yes. running for somebody that messed up. Yes. God is in love with the backslider. God, yes. God is in love with the criminal. Right. God is in love with the sinner. The Bible says that the father ran to him. Yes. Fell upon his neck. Mm. Kissed him. Mm. He kissed him. He, he fell upon his neck. 
he kissed him, and the son began to go through this rehearsed speech. That's right. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I have sinned in your sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your high servants. But let me just start notice on you. Once you saved, you've done that. Yeah, <laughs> Once you were born again, you can never be a slave to the devil anymore. Yeah. This boy was messed up on the outside. This boy was messed up on the inside. This boy was torn up all the way. This boy was in the midst of trouble. This boy was torn asunder. This boy had gotten out of stuff that his daddy bought. This boy had gotten out of stuff that his daddy provided for him. He was shown up messed up. And some of us in this room, some of us in this room are messed up. And, and we know how to camouflage. We, we know how to look cold. And we, we know how to put on a mask. We know how to do it. But this boy was messed up. Bring it here. 
up with my heart. And we don't make this. Cause this is my fault. He was lost. And now he's found. He was dead. And now he lives. And the Bible says, they began to make marriage. It's alright. When we get on the other side, we may be torn and down.